zero percent alcohol I have to do something with the double and single action Adams <laughs> Manchester, England, England. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is a very special day for me today, as I probably have the most elegant percussion revolver of the mid-19th century in my hands. This pistol was designed by Robert Adams, an Englishman, a great, great competitor to Colt. And this was one of the very, very first revolvers to offer you the traditional single action and the double action firing mode in one revolver. This pistol saw service in the Indian Mutiny, in the American Civil War, both on the Union and Confederate sides, so it has the place in firearms history. Why don't we take a closer look? The greatest threat for Colt's European business were the solid frame self cocking double action revolvers of the British gun makers. The Dean brothers, William Tranter, James Carr, and Robert Adams played an important part in revolutionizing the revolver systems. But it was Robert Adams who had the greatest impact with patenting the first ever real DA system of the world in 1851. So ladies and gentlemen, let's take a closer look now to this beauty. The first interesting thing about this revolver, that it looks like a Trenter Force model, but it's not a Trenter Force model. This is an Adams double action and single action trigger system revolver. Although it looks like the Trenter, this is truly the trigger system of the 1856 Beaumont Adams revolvers. The second interesting thing about this pistol is that it was not manufactured in England, but it was manufactured in Belgium, Liège, by Celestine Dandoy. Celestine Dandoy was a very, very good quality gun maker who produced guns, for example, Le Mans revolvers for the Confederacy and for the Union as well. But uh, he also produced single and double action Adams revolvers. But they were fully licensed, so this is not a pirate copy. This is a very high quality and very, very good copy of the Adams revolver, manufactured especially for the Adams company, which did not produce enough for the market, could not produce enough for the market, so they used other manufacturers also to, to, to have a good market presence. The inscription on the top of the frame says, manufactured by CD, duly and legally licensed. Also on the frame, the CD letters indicate Celestine Dandoy, the ELG letters standing for the Liege proof house, are visible on the back of the cylinder. Let's see the advantages and the disadvantages of this pistol. First of all, it has a solid frame design and the barrel and the frame itself is one single part. It's machined out of one single piece of steel block. It's very strong, very sturdy. It's much better than the Colts where you have the barrel as a separate part from the frame. The second important feature of this gun, of course, is the double action system, which gives a much higher firing rate than the single action versions. And also you have the sights on non-moving parts of the pistol, you have the rear sight on the frame, and you have an adjustable front sight on the barrel. The rear sight of this beautiful revolver is also interesting, as it's just a little hole on the plate at the back of the frame. And you just have to place the front sight, the bead front sight, into that little hole, and there you have a beautiful side picture, a beautiful and interesting side picture. Which is also an important thing is that the grip is very very comfortable. It's much better than the, on the American revolvers, which is which uh, are usually undersized, so you have to have a very small hand to have a secure grip, even on a Remington or on a Colt. But this one is, is a well-balanced grip, very very good grip. Another in interesting feature of this revolver is the safe safety. Uh, if you move the hammer back a bit and you push in this little spring, then the safety engages and there you go, the hammer cannot hit the nipples so you can load all chambers. Regarding chambers, you have only five of them, not six as on the course, so you have one less shot, but you can fire faster. If you want to disengage the safety, you just have to pull the trigger and it will automatically pop out and let you fire the next round. So this is a really clever design. The loading lever itself is not as comfortable as on the Colts, but still it works fine, so no problem with that. If you cock the hammer, the next chamber is just under the loading lever, so it is good enough for loading all the five chambers in a very quick and fast way. Enough of that talk, let's go to the range and shoot something finally.
The standard 4mm caps were a bit too large for my Adams, so I had to squeeze them a bit to have a tight fit. After some fine tuning the load, I decided to check the 25m grouping. The best charge was 18 grains of 3F Swiss powder. I was aiming at the bottom center of the black area and the shots hit quite high and a bit to the right with 18 grains of 3F Swiss powder and a 457 brown ball. Although the rifling of my Adams is quite worn, I cannot say I was not satisfied with the grouping. The 5 shot group could be easily covered with a 6 cm radius circle. In fine tuning the bullet size, first you have to measure the diameter of the chambers, which was 0.459 inches in my Adams. Then I slide the bore that was 445 between the lens and 455 between the grooves, telling me to use a 457 round ball to have a guest tight fit. In the American terminology this is a 44 caliber revolver, but the British are always different, so they call it a 54 bore revolver using the same gauge system as with the shotguns. The battle worn bore is anything but perfect, but the rifling is still quite ok for shooting I think. People usually think that it was Colt who invented the revolver itself, but in reality he only patented the internal mechanism to rotate the cylinder and to lock the cylinder and to fire the gun. So this system was protected by a patent until 1857 and the British gun makers had to find something in the meantime that could replace this system and can be just as more ingenious. And Adams came up with a very good idea. Even if you cut the hammer it's interesting that your cylinder is still not locked. You can see it's loose. To lock the cylinder, first you have to start pulling the trigger, then the trigger system will rotate the cylinder into the end position, and now the cylinder stop will engage, so when the gun fires, your cylinder is completely locked, and you can be 100% sure that the chamber is aligned with the barrel. Let me show you what happens when you fire the Adams revolver in double action and single action mode. So the main parts of the system are the trigger, the hand assembly, the hand should be in this position, but the spring is pushing it back so I cannot keep it there. We have the hammer here. The hammer is linked to the main spring, which is a V-spring, it's located somewhere here. So let's imagine the hammer is under tension. We have a little hook on the hammer, what you can see here. And we also have a small recess here, close to the neck. And we also have a small link to connect the trigger and the hammer. And of course we have a small V-spring to push back the trigger into normal position. Let's see what happens when we fire the gun in single action mode. The process starts with cocking the hammer and the little hook will pull back the trigger as well through the connecting link. Now the sear of the single action mode which is attached to the frame and you cannot see it now, it will engage the recess on the hammer like this. So now if I continue to pull the trigger the link will act as a push rod, it will pop out the sear from the recess and it will allow the hammer to move forward and to fire the cap. After the firing is done and if I release the trigger, the little V-spring will push the trigger back to its normal position so we can start over again. The unusually positioned single action mode sear is visible if you cock the hammer. That little moving plate at the neck of the hammer is what I'm talking about. So this was a single action mode, let's see what happens in double action. Now the process will start with pulling the trigger, and in this case the little link connecting the hammer and the trigger will act as a push rod. It is currently engaged into the recess on the hammer, and as I move the trigger backwards it will rotate the hammer as well and it will cock the hammer, until it reaches the end position. When it reaches the end position, this little link that is acting as a sear now, it will pop out, This is the end position, it pops out and it will allow the hammer to fall forward and to fire the percussion cap. Now if I release the trigger, the little V-spring will move it back to the normal position and the sear or the link, it will go back to the original position and we can start the process over. I remove the cylinder to have a look at the locking mechanism. Check close to see that both the hand and the bolt are elevating when pulling the trigger. 
The critics of the court system said that when you fire single action court revolver, when the hammer falls and it explodes the percussion cap, the gases will try to blow back the hammer. When the hammer is moving backwards, it will immediately try to rotate the cylinder as it is connected to the hand. And they said that in this case the hand will wear out, the hand can be damaged. With the Adams revolvers, this problem was solved because the hammer itself is a completely separate item from the hand. So when you fire this pistol, so when you fire this pistol and you have the trigger pulled, you can see if, it, if the hammer is blown back, it won't cause any problem because not the hammer is moving the cylinder, but the trigger system. Let's have some double action fun. For me, the Adams revolver is clearly one of the best percussion revolvers of the 19th century. It sets such modern standards that are followed today by the greatest revolver makers all around the world. So ladies and gentlemen, if you like the Adams revolver and you happen to like my videos also, why don't you hit that subscribe button down there? And if you do so, I promise that I will choose so many good topics for you in the future as well. So you've been watching the Cap and Boy YouTube channel, stay cool and keep your powder dry. Until next time.